so we have started with the refraction process see what we have learned that whenever the light travels right the light travels in a straight line but if you keep a glass piece in between what will happen to the light you can see here i have shown you this diagram also isn't it if you can see that this is the light ray which is coming from air this is air can you see that it is written here air okay so this light is coming from the air and you have kept a glass slab in between right so what is happening to the to the light ray when it is entering to the glass slab can you see that the light has bent some to the some extent yes or no and then again when it is leaving the glass medium it is again bending a little bit it is moving ahead right so this is called as a refraction what is a refraction light will not reflect back it will pass through the medium okay so what is a refraction refraction is actually change in speed of a light so what is going to happen here whenever the light is going to enter from the air medium to the glass medium obviously the speed of a light is going to change isn't it so that speed of light when it is changing then we call that phenomenon as a refraction got it so what we have seen what is a refractive index yesterday we have learned these laws of refraction also correct so what is a refractive index we have seen that when the light changes its medium from one transparent medium now air is a transparent medium and glass is also a transparent medium so what is the speed of light in air it will be different in the glass correct so if you take the ratio of the speed of light in medium 1 which is air to the speed of light in medium 2 which is glass so their speed will be denoted by v1 and v2 right so this ratio is always constant and that it is called as a refractive index getting it now what is this refractive index it is in uh, it is denoted by small n and what is this 2 1 written 2 1 is what the speed of the light in medium 1 and medium 2 is given correct so the refractive index of medium 2 with respect to medium 1 this is the ratio getting it everyone or it is confusing any doubt now let's move ahead so that you will understand it more clearly now pay attention here so if you want to calculate the refractive index of the media here so what you are going to take speed of the light in air divided by speed of the light in medium any other medium you can see right so let us take c as the speed of light in air and v will be the speed of light in any medium so you are going to express it in format of a nm divided is equal to c upon v so you can see here the absolute refractive index of a medium is simply called as its refractive index nothing is different different in here got it now here in this table you can see there are different different materials given can you see the list of material medium here and their refractive index is given here now what do you understand from this refractive index the numbers which are written here if it is given for example i will tell you it is given that ice water the refractive index of ice is 1.31 okay that means what it is a ratio this is a ratio of refractive this is a ratio of speed of a light in air with divided by speed of light in ice got it if you are taking a ratio of that speed you will get this value of 1.31 is it clear everyone that is why it is called as a refractive index of a ice similarly if you see another example here we'll take example of a um, crown glass okay crown glass is a type of a glass which is fitted in some windows or on also the different types of lenses are made with the help of this crown glass now what is this 1.52 refractive index of a crown glass is given as 1.52 now what do you understand by this now if i ask you what is the refractive index of a crown glass is written here what do you mean by this that means the refractive index of the crown glass is given as the speed of a light in air divided by speed of light in a crown glass okay so if you try to uh, do the division of those speed of lights then you are going to get this value of 
1.52, which is the refractive index of a crown glass. Got it now? Okay, so here you can see different different refractive indices are given here. For alcohol, it is different. For kerosene, it is different. Right? Turpentine oil, fused quartz. Fused quartz is also a type of a glass, or uh, you can say it's a kind of a silica, silica, uh, silicon dioxide. It's a chemical which which is used to make a glass. So it is having a different refractive index. Benzene is a chemical, right? You can see Canada balsam is a type of a oil which is used to make the slides and all. So you can see these are the different transparent material or liquids. You can say where they are having different different refractive indices. Okay, you can see now from this table, an optically denser medium may not possess a greater mass density. Now, what is the mass density? I I will just explain here. Here, now what is this optically optical density, or what is this concept of optical density? We are going to know here. Now, the ability of a medium to refract the light is also expressed in terms of its optical density. Okay, now this optical density has a definite connotation. Now, what does this connotation means? It has a different definition. It has its own definition. Now, whenever we say a density, it doesn't means that it is related to the mass. Okay, in case of lenses, optical density is a different term. Getting it? Now, what is this optical density here? See, whenever you are going to express the optical density. it is not same as the mass density okay we have been using the term rarer medium and a denser medium in this chapter now what do you mean by a rarer medium yes rarer medium means what which is having a less density means the particles of that medium are very loosely arranged that is called as a rarer medium and what is a denser medium the particles will be arranged very closely together that is why it is called as a denser medium so if i ask you what is a rarer medium in uh, and denser medium in air and glass so what answer you will give me okay air is a rarer medium why because we know that air is having particles very loosely arranged and glass will be the denser medium getting it so here if you are considering the two concepts of rarer medium and denser medium it actually means optically rarer and optically denser medium getting it so when we can say that medium is optically denser than the other so in comparing two media the one with a larger refractive index is optically denser medium you can write down this sentence everyone please you have to remember this okay just write down this definite this sentence i'm telling you the one or the medium with a large refractive index is optically denser medium than the other okay so the other medium we have lower refractive index because it is optically rarer so in a glass and air air will be optically rarer okay and glass will be optically denser so the refractive index of the glass will be higher than the air is it clear so if you compare this refractive indices from this table if you see if you take a glass see take a crown glass okay what is the refractive index of a crown glass 1.52 right and what is the refractive index of a air it is only 1.0003 so which is optically denser and which is optically rarer tell me here so crown glass will be optically denser and air will be optically rarer medium so the speed of a light is higher in rarer medium obviously isn't it speed of a light yes. in rarer medium will be higher than the denser medium so whenever the ray of a light is going to pass from air to the glass the speed will slow down okay thus a ray of a light traveling from rarer medium to denser medium slows down and bends towards the normal now have you understood why it will bend towards the normal because the speed of a light will slow down in a denser medium so it bends towards the normal and when it will travel away from the denser medium now if you consider the ray of light which is leaving the denser medium now again the light will pass from glass to the air so the speed will increase again and it will bend away from the normal understood everyone 
okay so let us move ahead there are some numericals given here i will explain you with the help of these numericals so that you will understand it more clearly okay there are going to be some examples from the textbook also i will just present that page just a minute see here a ray of a light traveling in air enters obliquely into water okay does the light ray bend towards the normal or away from the normal and why light bends towards the normal on entering into the water why because it happens because water is optically denser medium than air isn't it so when light travels from one rarer medium to the denser medium it will bend towards the normal just now i told you isn't it air is a rarer medium and water is a denser medium so obviously when it will enter into the water it will bend towards the normal next question number 2 you can see here light enters from air to glass having refractive index 1.50 okay what is this 1.50 it is refractive index of a glass what is the speed of light in a glass now the refractive index is given we have to calculate speed of light in a glass and speed of light in vacuum is given to us that is 3, 3 into 10 raised to 8 meters per second now what are the given values here you are going to write down first refractive index of a glass is given right what is this it is always denoted by refractive index of a glass is always denoted by mu okay you can see here this is refractive index of a glass it is always denoted by mu and can you tell me what is this a and g written yes what is a and what is g written here a is for air and g is for glass okay now the light is entering from air to the glass so the refractive index is given here 1.50 again speed of a light in vacuum is given 3 into 10 raised to 8 so what is the formula of refractive index here refractive index is always given by speed of a light in air divided by speed of a light in glass or velocity you can see velocity in air divided by velocity in glass so you can just put the values in the formula so we are going to calculate this velocity in glass speed of light in glass so take it on the left hand side so we will come on this side c divided by u or this is mu okay not u sorry it is mu so so it 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 is given as speed of a light in vacuum divided by refractive index as we have rearranged the equation so instead of air it should be vacuum here is it right yes so if you simplify this whole thing then you are going to get the value of 2 into 10 raised to 8 meters per second isn't it is the value correct yes so what is the speed of light in glass it is 2 into 10 raised to 8 meters per second have you understood this next from the table 10.3 the medium having highest optical density you are going to find out the medium with the highest optical density and find the medium with the lowest optical density yes i will present that page again so that you will understand the table i will present just now tell me which is the medium having highest optical density and with the lowest optical density so the medium with highest refractive index will have a highest optical density isn't it how did you compare it with the help of the refractive index correct so the diamond has a highest refractive index or it is shown as a optical density and the medium with the lowest refractive index will have a lowest optical density so air has a lowest optical density okay now the same table you are going to refer and the question is you are given kerosene turpentine and water okay in which of these does the light travel fastest kerosene water and turpentine water that is very correct answer because you know we have compared the refractive indices of all the three media water is having a refractive index of 1.33 kerosene 1.44 and turpentine oil is 1.47 so from these three this is optically rarer medium that is why light will travel faster in water very good very correct answer okay next the refractive index of a diamond is 2.42 now you can see here from this table 
the refractive index of a diamond is 2.42 what do you understand from this yes it is optically more denser okay what else you can tell about this you have given only the refractive index what else you you can answer about this refractive index of a diamond is given so what do you how do you express a refractive index yes what is the formula to express refractive index i told you it is the speed of a light correct so the refractive index of any medium yes. with respect to another it will give you the refractive index so that means what we are learning here the extent to which the light is bending in that particular medium right so when it is entering from first medium to the given medium the given value refractive index also states that the speed of light in diamond is 1 upon 2.42 times with speed of light in a vacuum these values okay, are constant values yes you are not going to calculate if it comes in the numericals the values will be already given you just have to put it into the formula and calculate the third one so it is compared with respect to vacuum getting it so the refractive index of a diamond is 1 upon 2.42 times to the speed of light in vacuum that is why it is written as 2.42 is the refractive index of a diamond is it clear everyone till here so whatever the table is given i will just clear it once whether these values are with respect to air or with respect to vacuum okay i will just clear that and will let you know in tomorrow's class because whatever the refractive indices are given in the textbook uh those those values are with respect to air or are with respect to vacuum okay. so other things are clear till here yes everyone because we are now going to move towards the ray diagrams okay there are ray diagrams which are going to be here for the lenses also you have studied this in case of concave and convex mirrors isn't it have you studied yes. the ray diagrams by yes, following so yes models? yes yes so similarly you are going to have certain rules to draw the ray diagrams and then we will see the different positions of the object and how the image is going to form okay students so we will stop here for today if you like our videos do share them and subscribe to our channel if you want awesome quizzes write to us keep watching and keep learning with walnut